When we think of farming, we think of tilling the soil, laboriously weeding and watering. But at Tennessee Urban Farm, they grow all their herbs and vegetables aeroponically. So Mona, as we walk into your greenhouses right here, we're pretty much hit right in the face of the power of an aeroponic system. This is gorgeous. Plants are completely lush. Tell me a little bit about what we see here and, and even some of the advantage of the aeroponic system. It's red mustard, giant okay. red mustard. And actually, this is the second harvest. It's a heart come back in one week. I've already harvested last week and cut, just stripped her naked, really, and trimmed her out and uh, came back. And you can see how fast she grows. So quick. So quick and so nutritious. It's unbelievable how nutritious it is. And I, I go ahead and take just sure. a little bite of that. And I'm going to give you a fair warning. It is hot and spicy. I love mustard. All right. <laughs> it is good. It's hot and spicy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's got that kick to it. Uh -huh. Aeroponics how that works. This holds 20 gallons of water, earth grade nutrients. I tell everybody it needs four things, actually five. I'll go in there and include five. It needs water, food, uh, sun or light, yep. right? And it needs a lot of love. That's and I'm right. really good about the loving part on this. And then of course, <laughs> oxygen. So yeah. uh, oxygen. So what's happening here in the greenhouse here, these are, the, there's a pump in there. That pump is pushing the water and the nutrients to the top okay. where these roots are dangling in the air. Every three minutes, it, the water and nutrients go to the top. They reinforce down, yep. hit the root system. It goes off for 12 minutes. The oxygen hits those roots and voila. Think about it, oxygen growing. So the roots are literally dangling in the air. Continually cycling. Continually cycling. The oxygen and mm -hmm. then the water three and minutes the nutrients. On, three, min three minutes on and 12 minutes off on this unit here. So the University of Mississippi did a study on this and they found that it actually grows 30% more yield and it grows three times faster. Look at this. I am growing 440 plants in this little space right here, right. six by eight space. That's what I was going to ask in about a six by eight space. Six by eight space. 440, 440 plants. plants. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because so you've grown up. We're growing using up. very ma maximizing square foot. Maximizing. Easy on the back. E oh, yes. After two back surgeries, it is easy on my back. As you can see, I do my flip flops and pearls. <laughs> I come out here and talk and love on them and eat and, and graze off of it. So. Fantastic. Simona, we're standing at these beautiful rows of seedlings that you have where all the magic begins for this aeroponic system. Tell me about what we see here and how it all goes down. All right, well, this is rock wool, have you, and I'm sure you've heard of rock wool. It's a volcanic rock spun together, so it holds that moisture. You can see how moist it is yeah. right there. So this was just seeded Monday evening. I was telling my husband, okay, we've got to get more seeded. we got to get more seeded. So we have got some gourmet lettuces. We're going to do some collards here okay. and some dinosaur kale. This is what we've got started Already right here. Already sprouting after Already just sprouting. a couple of days of uh, sowing Monday there. evening, yes. Wow, growing yep. quickly. And then moving on down to some of the other crops that you have. So this is really cool. We have thyme and, of course, uh, um, rosemary. Yep. We've got lots of lavender, different herbs and things that we're growing. Tomatoes, of course, you taking saw over off. here, taking yeah, off. Yeah. Oregano, and of course, even at a baby, oregano. Taste this oregano. You just can't Spicy. resist that. I got a little that. bit of Italian oh, it's in got me. a little bit of that. Hmm. Is that good or what? Sings in the mouth. It's, a, it's awesome. I yeah. love it. So have you ever had quinoa? We've got some quinoa growing, and everybody oh, says quinoa. Really? Yeah. You actually can eat those leaves. You put it in your salad and eat it, and it tastes exactly like quinoa. Who knew? And then, of course, red bean sorrel and green sorrel. You were the first person that I knew that knew about green sorrel. I love that. <laughs> Variety of different lettuces here. We've yeah. got the bib lettuce, the romaine lettuce. Still through the summertime. Still through the summertime. Here is a uh, organic lemon cucumber ball that I would love for you to try over here. Actually, you can see it's kind of you know, we got a little big one, little one right there. Uh -huh. But over here on the other gardens, you've just got to try it. It's absolutely delicious. So that was something new. Real easily Long grown in easily these grown. towers. Mm -hmm. Very wow. easily grown. Well, I can't say enough on how just lush and healthy even the seedling stages uh, look here just by standing at it and just such the variety that you have. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see. And after they've spent how many weeks in this seedling form before you transplant? Well, actually, two to three weeks. Okay. So this is two weeks old right here, and okay. we're going to take this and we're going to transplant it over here. And in 21 days, you're eating harvesting off of this. So from two weeks, we're, we're looking at this, mm -hmm. and then we're transplanting this, and in, in the, over the course of the next two to four weeks, this is all harvestable. That's right. Every week you're harvesting? Every week we're harvesting. Wow. Every week. And then after that crop is finished, you'll be pulling that out, cleaning the tower, and, and re -put, planting mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. 
Wow, always an endless. Always not, an endless. And from lettuces to more greens and to basil, arugula performs outstanding, outstanding. in these. Just complete, just buckets of greens as you ha keep continuing to harvest week after week. Week after week. So healthy. And then of course I can't we stop have, myself. Oh, please do, <laughs> please do. And All as right. I do, and I really do want you to smell my roots. <laughs> <laughs> and so the roots are literally just growing into the tower. They're growing into the They'll tower. They'll get 12 minutes of oxygen and then flushed again with three minutes. Three minutes of water and nutrients, mm. 12 minutes of oxygen. Is it smells that like smell? a light broccoli, almost like a clean smell. It's a very clean no smell. No dirt, always just no clean dirt. roots like this. Always clean wow. roots. Wow. And we, of course, we always get out here and clean it up. And But yeah, she's just beautiful, isn't she? Wow. Oh, this is the tail garden, isn't she beautiful? Look yeah. at the top there. This is- Bursting. Bursting that. This is a kale at the top. It's very, very big and nutritious up there. It's okay. beautiful. Kale is a cross between a Brussels sprout and a kale. Okay. And it's just absolutely delicious. It's a little overgrown. This is a dinosaur kale here uh, that's beautiful. I've got three different kales here um, that are growing. And then this is a blue curly kale. They co we call it a blue curly kale. Yep. She too has been trimmed um, a week ago. And look at how beautiful she comes back. So and one quick thing to I found, yeah. And one thing I found about this, um, the kale, oh my gosh, it will grow. I can cut and cut and cut and cut, and it will come back up to nine months growth that I get off of here. So, wow. I mean, that is a harvest of abundance right there. So here's the baby kale, and believe it or not, this baby kale was not even, it was planted just over the weekend. Okay. So you see, again, how fast it grows. Pest control, that's a really, really good point to bring up. And as you can see on some of the bigger ones, I had a little pest in here. It's a garden, it's gonna get pests. Sure. It's, you know, it's, that's the way it is. But our pest control is so cool and it's so clean because you see the the white tub in yeah. the here. It's all white. And if I come out here and I see little drippings, I know that I've got something on here. It's either the kale worms or I've got maybe even grasshoppers. They love getting in here. Okay. Uh, and sometimes you may get some aphids in here. You know, you know, there's diff different things. Sure. But if I come out pests. here and I see it, the first thing I do is I come out and I hose it down really, really good. So Spring I always off. keep it cleaned off. I'm, that's a key thing. I'm always wiping it down and I, as you can see my floor is clean in here so that I can see those. If something happens and it gets out of control, this mm -hmm. is a beautiful part about it. Let's say we had a um, disease on these here. Uh -huh. I can take these four out and not have to worry about this because of the way it's built here. So Mona, in addition to growing in kind of a partially uh, well protected area in this greenhouse here, you also have, I noticed as we were walking in, some smaller gardens outside growing right out in the elements. Tell me a little bit about those. Well, I have five of them out there growing. What I have out there is a hodgepodge, I guess whole you could say. A whole stuff mix of stuff. There. I have uh, organic lemon ball cucumbers, yeah. as I shared with you Saw before, the, the cucumbers. I have a salsa bar, uh, which ha jalapeno peppers and all the tomatoes, a variety of the tomatoes. I have an herb garden out there, and I have a, a mixture of a lettuce garden. And I actually have a sugar snap pea garden out there which is really cool. Again, that grandbaby come out, pick those off there. I'm going to let her eat all she wants. Good. And at the bottom, I have cantaloupe and watermelons. You're trailing think, heavier trailing, items you're I'm putting at the heavy, bottom. I'm at, uh -huh, and gotcha. the tomatoes at the top. There is one thing that you always want to do. Remember, I also said it was aeroponic because into hydroponic. Yes. And I can show you on there is you always want to make sure that the root system is not growing down and dangling in the water. Okay. So that is one thing I'll have to go over there and show you and check on that. Uh, make sure those roots are not in there. We just reach in here and pull the roots out. So that's the only bending over that I actually have to do after uh, that. And it's pretty nice and being able to reach over there, just check the pump and keep clean. So, so easy. Without the soil, the roots are a lot lighter, aren't they? Yes, so easy, nice. so clean. Fantastic. Well, thank you so very much for just welcoming us into your Tennessee urban farm and showing me all around and so showing us how you maximize the square footage with aeroponics. Thank you very much. All right. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.